Hi everyone. Today in this video, let us discuss canaglyphosin. What is this drug canaglyphosin? The suffix glyphosin indicates this drug is going to inhibit the flow of the glucose into the systemic circulation. So this drug is one of the sodium glucose co-transporter 2 SGLT2 inhibitor. SGLT2 is a co-transporter which is responsible for absorption of both sodium as well as glucose within the renal tubules. So such transporter is going to be inhibited by canaglyphosin. Since this drug is going to inhibit the reabsorption of glucose, this drug can be used in the treatment of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Along with the diet and exercise, the better glycemic control can be maintained by canaglyphosin. But this drug is not acting on the beta cells of pancreas, instead it is acting on the renal system. By use of canaglyphosin, glucose is going to be more excreted through the renal tubules. So this drug is going to increase the glucose excretion, thereby it reduce the glucose levels within the serum. That's why this drug can be combined with other anti-diabetic agents such as metformin in order to produce better glycemic control. Control of glucose levels is essential because uncontrolled glucose levels may affect so many systemic organs. Diabetes can affect the heart functionality resulting in the increased risk of stroke and death in the patients. It can also reduce the functionality of the neurons leading to neuronal damage. And it can affect the ocular system resulting in the blindness. Even it can reduce the functionality of the renal system resulting in the renal failure. So because of so many complications of diabetes, the glucose levels should be strictly controlled, which can be achieved by use of canaglyphosin. Particularly, this drug is going to decrease the risk of various systemic complications associated with diabetes mellitus. So this drug can be used in the diabetic patients who are having the increased risk of heart failure, increased risk of stroke and heart-related death. In such patients, canaglyphosin can reduce the risk by increasing the glucose excretion. Similarly, this drug can be used in the patients with end-stage renal disease where the renal functionality can be improved by better glycemic control. So in those patients where the creatinine kinase levels are excessively increased, canaglyphosin can be used to improve the renal functionality which reduces the creatinine kinase levels. So this drug is going to decrease the risk of cardiovascular and renal disorders in the diabetic patients as well as it can also reduce the hospitalization. So along with glycemic control, this drug can be used in the diabetic patients with systemic complications. But in the patients with type 1 diabetes mellitus, this drug is contraindicated because in such patients, this drug may increase the diabetic ketoacidosis, which is more troublesome than the benefits produced by this drug. That's why Canaglyphosin is not indicated for type 1, it is only used for type 2 diabetes mellitus. Similarly, this drug is somewhat limited in the renal disorders. So, in the patients with any decreased renal functionality, where the estimated glomerular filtration rate is less than 30 ml per minute per 1.73 square meter, in such patients, canaglyphosin is ineffective as it is ineffective due to renal dysfunction. As well as this drug can also further increase the renal dysfunction. So in such patients with EGFR less than 30 ml per minute, this drug is less preferred. Now let us the precautions of canaglyphosin. One of the important precautions is that canaglyphosin can produce lower limb amputations. This is because of increased infections at the lower limb. This drug may increase the risk of gangrene. It can increase the diabetic foot ulcers. Because of these, amputations may be possible in the patients, particularly when this drug is going to be prescribed at higher dose such as 300 mg given once daily. So this is one of the important precautions that should be considered. And in the patients with already any previous history of amputations or lower limb infections, this drug may increase the risk, so it should be carefully prescribed. In such patients, when the benefits are more compared with the risk, this drug is going to be prescribed. Similarly, this drug can produce volume depletion, 
resulting in the symptomatic hypotension and particularly this hypotension is more pronounced in those patients with renal dysfunction for instance when EGFR is less than 60 ml per minute in such patients we can observe more symptomatic hypotension or those patients who are taking the loop diuretics again volume depletion is more possible when they are given along with canagliflozin. Another important precaution is that this drug is going to increase the glucose excretion through the renal tubules. That's why this drug may increase the risk of urinary tract infections. So when there is a more glucose excretion, there is an increased risk of infections within the urinary tract. And finally, this drug can also increase the risk of bone fractures. So in those patients with any low bone mineral density, this drug should be carefully used. Now let us see the side effects of canagliflozin. This drug can increase the urinary excretion resulting in the increased urination which may result in the increased thirst in the patients and as we have seen earlier it, this drug can increase the risk of urinary tract infections. Other side effects like nausea, constipation can be observed. It can also increase the fungal infections particularly it can produce genital mycotic infections both in the female and male it can produce the mycotic infections and it can also produce ketoacidosis and finally symptomatic hypotension can be produced because of volume depletion. Now let us see how this drug acts. Within the proximal convoluted tubule, this is the apical membrane where the glucose and sodium are present within the filtrate and they can be reabsorbed within the PCT. But for the reabsorption of these two moieties, a special transporter is present that is the SGLT2, sodium glucose co-transporter 2. Through this transporter, both sodium as well as glucose can enter into the transmembrane and then they can be reabsorbed into the systemic circulation through specialized pumps. On the basolateral membrane, one of the pump is present sodium potassium ATPase pump, which can exchange the sodium for the potassium. Now, sodium can enter into the systemic circulation with the exchange of potassium. Similarly, for glucose reabsorption, GLUT2 receptors are present on the basolateral membrane. Through these receptors, glucose can enter into the systemic circulation. In this way, both sodium as well as glucose can be reabsorbed within the PCT. Now, canagliflozin can inhibit the SGLT2 transporters, which results in the decreased reabsorption of both sodium as well as glucose. As glucose is less absorbed, it is more excreted, resulting in the decreased blood glucose levels. In this way, canagliflozin can produce better glycemic control by increase the glucose excretion. Now let us see the chemical nature of this drug. So this is a structure of canagliflozin. Here we can observe the linkage to the sugar moieties. This is the C-glycoside. And here we can observe the heterocyclic ring system that is the thiophene. So canagliflozin is a C-glycoside with thiophene containing moiety. How it is given? This drug is available as a tablet at two strengths 100 mg as well as 300 mg. The initial dose is started at low dose such as 100 mg and it is given as once daily before the first meal of the day. The dose can be increased up to 300 mg again given as once daily based on the efficacy of the treatment. But in the patients with any renal dysfunction where the EGFR is around 30 to 60 ml per minute, in such patients this drug should be used only at the 100 mg dose given as once daily. So that's about this drug canagliflozin which is a sodium glucose co-transporter 2 inhibitor. By inhibiting this transport canagliflozin inhibits the reabsorption of sodium as well as glucose. As the glucose is not reabsorbed at the PCT it is more excreted within the urine resulting in the decreased blood glucose levels. This canagliflozin can be used in the patients with increased risk of heart failure, stroke or end stage renal disease. In such patients, this drug can reduce the risk by increasing the excretion of glucose within the urine. But this drug may increase the risk of lower limb amputations because of any infection or gangrene. And it can also produce some urinary tract infections and volume depletion which should be closely monitored. So that's about this drug canagliflozin. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel.
share this video with your friends, push your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.